we have the uh, uh, famous uh, uh, sequence of Moshe Rabbeinu approaching the burning uh, thorn bush, and uh, the Rebbeinu Shalom uh, says to him two things. Al Tika of Halom, don't come too close. Don't come here, specifically this particular place, too close. Shal ne'olecho me'araglecho. And take your shoes off. Remove your shoes. Why? Ki admas kodeshu. Because this place is ki mahamokom asher ata omed. All of the place in which you're standing is, uh, is holy. So the Orachayim HaKodesh understands there are two mitzvahs that are being, two categories of mitzvahs and two mitzvahs that Moshe Rabbeinu was being commanded. A negative mitzvah, don't come too close. A positive mitzvah, to remove the shoes. And the Orachayim HaKodesh understands that this is a model for Kolater Kula, that there's a preferred situation. The ideal is to have a purified, pristine expediting of the positive, which means it must be preceded by the, by the negative of of Loisoso. First, the negative, remove any kind of ulterior motives, uh, negative motivations, and uh, even uh, uh, too much of a sense of self, and then expedite the, the, the positive mitzvah. And then it's a positive mitzvah which, uh, which has been uh, purified. So that would be like Davra Melech says in Tilim, Sumira Yase Tov. First the Sumira and then the Yase Tov. Some of us have already discussed that, uh, that there are times in history, the uh, Mafoshim B'nai Yisoscho talks about this and the uh, other Gedele Chsidus and the Chsam Sefer also talks about it is that there are times in history where there's nevertheless, though that is the ideal, sumera v'yasei tov, remove the whatever might be subjective uh, uh, underlying uh, driving forces, and then do the, the positive. Sometimes Yaakov Ovino already introduces that we will have to suspend that preferred situation. And instead, we're going to start in the middle and we'll start with an Asay Tov. Sam Sefer uh, likens the, the concept to sometimes a patient is so ill that he doesn't feel pain, so he first order of business of the doctor is to nourish him sufficiently that he can get to the point of feeling the pain. Similarly, somebody has to get to the point of feeling the ra is ra. The evil is evil. If somebody doesn't feel that, he can't, cannot guide the, the doctor. He's not, he's, he's not going to be uh, able to be too helpful in, in this regard. So there's a preferred situation. Yaakov introduces this with putting the priority of the right hand on Ephraim and the left hand on Menashe. Ephraim represents Shehefrani Meir Zoyevai, that is increase, increase, brocha. And the negative Nashani Mikolamoli, that going to erase all of the negative that the Menashe, that's the 
that gets the left hand. Now it's also would also put forth the idea, some may recollect, that the that's why he doesn't remove them, switch them around. Uh, his Kuni says that uh, it might uh, it might embarrass uh, Menasha more. Uh, the Pnei Sosa says because it's a temporary measure. Ideally, we're going to come back to the preferred situation, the Lechatchila, of uh, Asei Tov and, uh, and Suomera. The Meshech Chochma, the Meir Simcha, the Meshech Chochma, in his introduction to Sefer Shmos, has a uh, uh, stunning uh, essay where he describes that Meshech Rabbeinu had to reach a point of utter objectivity so that the what the Novi would say in the future, Yoel Zichru Torres Moshe, that the that the the tale of Moshe is inviolate, non-negotiable, it, it can't be can't be tampered with. So Moshe Benu had to transcend any kind of physical reality, therefore he had to separate from Tzipora, and he was removed from the physical universe. Meshe Chochma has a chiddush that he, that is sholi uh, that since Yoshua uh, put in the last eight psukim in the Torah after Meshe Rabbeinu was nifta, and the Meshe Rabbeinu uh, retrace them, uh, the different shitas of how that happened, and Yitz Hashem, we'll, we'll talk about that uh, hopefully in Yitz Hashem in the future, but the, but Yeshua then partakes of the Nesina Satera of Meisha Rabbeinu. Uh, it's Sholi B'machleikas, uh, uh, it's brought in Shulchan Aruch, the difference between somebody uh, blaspheming uh, uh, as it were, uh, and uh, denigrating Meshe Rabbeinu's name or Yeshua's name, Le- Le- Halocha, the, the, the Beis Yosef and the Ramor uh, discuss the, the question halachically, and uh, the, there is a differentiation. The Taz says that the, the, there's a difference between Yeshua and Meshe Rabbeinu, but that, that's not the way the, uh, the Meshe Chochma reads it. Now, Sheikh Chochmah reads that uh, they partake, but for, for our purposes, for the moment, that, the, that the, there had to be an utter objectivity of Teres Moshe that would govern and guide Klai Yisrael throughout history. What's interesting is that the, uh, even the Sanhedrin, the Sanhedrin had to be in the Lishka Sagozis, like Benazai says, that uh, you don't find any of the kinuyim of a Borchu by the description of the Korbonus. You just find uh, the uh, the Yudke Vovke, which is a, an object, not a manifestation of the Rebbe Nisham, it's Kaviochol, the essence, because there shouldn't be the illusion that the Rebbe Shalom is getting some kind of advantage from our Kabonis, as Lahav de Lafi of Dolus was the case by the Yevde of Edezara. Therefore, the Sanhedrin would sit in the Lishka Sagozas near the Mizbeach, that they had to attain to a level of, of total objectivity in the taking decision of the of the law of Taylor. So objectivity is the is the is, is an ideal Meshe Rabbeinu. Mitzad Sheni, the Rambam brings La Halocha. Uh, again, some of us have referred back to this. The Rambam brings La Halocha that the for someone to sit on a Sanhedrin, he need needed to have a child, because without having a child, he doesn't make a breakthrough outside of himself for Rachmanus. And 
his judgment, his koach his judgment, had to be mitigated by the subjective sensitivity to to having a child, to Rachmanus. Now, that seems to be a contradiction. We're talking about the subjective and the, the subjective as being an advantage, as a key to, uh, to being able to relate to others. Somehow that the, uh, every one of us is locked inside ourselves, our subjective uh, urgencies, uh, biological, psychological, sociological, and the, we don't make that breakthrough outside of ourselves until we have that which is us and isn't us simultaneously, which is our child. And then you can make the, the extension to another. That's what we're being taught in the Halacha and the Rambam, is that, that a, a, a Dayan and the Sanhedrin, the Paskin Dine Nefoshis, needed to have that subjective experience in order to break through to the objectivity. And Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe Rabbeinu, attained to his level of utter objectivity and he gets schal for that and because he with his he wasn't created as a robot as such he in fact passed the necessary test as a as a as a uh, as a shepherd that ran after the stray the, the, the maverick carried him and the, his commitment to defending the Jew being beaten by the, by the mitzvah. All of these were a result of his amelus, his extraordinary, extraordinary stretching of the capacity of the subjective human orientation and then he attains to a level of the, of the objective. Here, we, we see that the, the goal is to reduce subjectivity. But it would seem clear that the, that Meish Rabbeinu only achieved, why did the Rebbe Hashem create a man a human being that would have to, as a result of his subjective amelus and his mesiris nefesh and his devotion, pass all of the tests along the way. And then he reaches the point where he can, the climax is that, is that level of objectivity. It would seem that one has to pass through that level. The initial Navua when Moshe Rabbeinu is approaching the snare. He's approaching the snare. The LOK, the Rebbein Shem identifies Kavayochal himself, LOK Ovicha, the Machlekes, the, uh, according to the, the Ibn Ezra, that's a, re a reference to Avram Yitzhak and Yaakov, uh, Ovicha. According to the Rambam, in Hilchus Malochim, it's a reference to Amram. And there's a medrash, the medrash, okay, Avicha, the, the God of your father, according to the, to the medrash, the Rebbeinu Shalom said to Moshe Rabbeinu, in the voice of Amram, later he was told that Amram had been nifta, but at the initial voice was a voice which was, had the sweetness and the, the emotional subjective connection that it's the continuity, it's his father's voice that the Rebbe Shalom appears to him and, and talks to him. So again, Moshe Rabbeinu is going through his paces and stages and phases of subjective growth in order to attain to a level of that level of utter objectivity, which, according to the Meshech Chochmah, partially would be achieved by 
Yoshua in a limited sense. That's why by Yoshua, when the Nevoah appears to the Yoshua, according to some of Hoshim, it's Mashman from the Malbim like that, and uh, some others that, uh, that the one shoe is removed because he's partially attaining to that level. What is it the shoe represents? The shoe, according to the Malbim, uh, like uh, by Chlitsa, the shoe fits tightly over the foot and the shoe is a, uh, the shoe is the goof. The shoe is like the body that clothes the, the neshama, which is, which is inside. But there are, there are two levels, says the Malbim. There's the, there's the physical goof, that's the one level, but then there's the, the imagination. The imagination which somehow uh, navigates, interacts, and connects between the, the body and the soul. That it's, it's an extension of, of the physical being on some level. So, Moshe Avenu attains to his level of objectivity through Amelus to perhaps there's a kind of similarity that the it would make possible that any one of us that later that in our interacting with Taylor in our learning with Taylor we're coming in contact with the with the moment at Sani we're revisiting like the Ramban says in Parshas Bois uh, Hanun that the that every time a Jew is learning Torah, he's reconnecting to the moment at Sinai and the, all the Kailas of Vokim, Hako, Biko, Kol. And it's a moment where, as the Meshe Chochma says in Parshas Bolok, that calls attention to the fact that Klal Yisrael, had they not made the eagle, had achieved the level of being like Malochim. They were angelic, like they wouldn't have been shikha. They wouldn't have been shikha. But they slid down. How is that possible if they had that moment? There was, a, there was always a, a modicum of a residual kind of a, of a bhira that's always left in place. Meisha Rabbeinu in... Makes that breakthrough. The Rambam in uh, Hilchus Tshuva says, in a certain sense, that the that every good Jew can, to a certain extent, be like. I'm adding the words to a certain extent. The be like Moshe Rabbeinu. I remember debating that uh, that Rambam with uh, with some people over the years. Uh, uh, some B'nai Teira that, uh, that uh, seems that everybody can reach that level. The Rambam places it, places that insight, that idea in Hilchus Tshuva, not in Hilchus Tamatera. In Hilchus Tshuva means that if I maximize my potential, then I can reduce my subjectivity to a certain extent, but I can't skip that step. I can't ignore the subjective step. If I ignore the subjective step, then what's the point? It's redundancy, it's robot-like. It's not, not, not a question of, of technologically being programmed to do what has to be done. That's a malach. A human being has to make choices and a human being makes choices and a human being making choices is flexing the muscles the and and fusing bringing together the the subjective with the objective uh, reducing the subjectivity but i cannot ignore that as my gate of entry and that's why we've come back to uh, frequently to the idea that we make a bracha in the morning we ask for mesikos we ask for 
enjoying the pleasure, the aesthetic pleasure of Limud HaTeira in order to get to the point where we, in fact, then can go beyond ourselves and attain to a certain level of, of objectivity. So there will always be this tension. Like the Yorachayim HaKodesh says, yes, there's a preferred situation of uh, don't, don't, don't come too close. You can't come too close. Negative. Sumera. But and shall no lecha. Remove the the remove the shoes. That the remove the covering over the the leg, the body, and allow the neshama to to be preeminent in the uh, uh, there are some some of Hoshim that uh, understand that the uh, that Nalayim also can be understood to be gloves anything that covers the uh, the body and that the uh, in boas with the chlipen that it was removing of gloves and the, the rias that are brought to, to that, that the, the Kohanim in the Beis Migdash carrying the Olin were, were they were without, without shoes. Mephoshim bring that the bracha that we make in the morning, Shosali called Tzorki, that that it goes on shoes that the uh, i believe that it's the shaloh kodesh that makes the connection because of the posik but the tamshilechal maisiyu kol shato tachas lor raglov the rebbein has uh, has placed uh, everything under the uh, under the uh, on the man, that the the man tamshilehu b'maisa yodecho. Allow me to be sovereign over uh, the tamshilehu. The Bansham has created man to be sovereign b'maisa yodecho in his in your uh, handiwork. Kol shato tachas raglov. Everything has been placed under his as his feet, and therefore the there's a the wearing of the shoes in a certain sense creates a certain level of, of sovereignty of governance uh, and the the taking off of the shoes is a, then a kind of expression of humility I believe Rav Shlomo Zaman uh, says that's why the the oval has to remove his shoes that the that Ain't Shilton Hamisa. That there's no governance. We know we're not in control. We don't. Uh, we don't act with uh, with ascendancy. There's a there's a reduction. as the other moment of humility. The fact that we that uh, when confronting confronting our mortality, and that's the that's the message of uh, of mortality. Shem Yitain, that the uh, it's also gloves that the uh, like uh, some of Orshim want to learn the chlipen by uh, taking off the glove. The, the when when people enter into a into a, a kind of a, into a in, into a kind of a, a sense of uh, relationship of uh, commitment to each other it's the commitment is on the animals don't have covenants animals don't have uh, such uh, such relationships of uh, of connection one to another 
Shemi Yitain, that the, uh, we're facing another lockdown here uh, in Eretz Yisrael, have uh, functioning within the norms. Uh, hope you should be sure. Teva have a chupa tomorrow. The granddaughter a daytime chupa up, uh, up and change to be outside and attend to, to the according to the norms and the the, the regulations. The um, when I when I think of uh, of gloves, I'll, part, I'll end with this thought. <laughs> um, living daily as all of us are with the Reb um, Gershon, the Ponovich Rav, the Ponovich Roshivas, uh, uh, request, direction, directive, Injunction that we have to be besimcha, b- that the, that's the the only way to and to, to deal with the world in the, with humor with simcha to keep the sense of paradox. Uh, how do we do it? This pendulum that we swing between the subjective and the objective, the objective reality is somehow all of what Klal Yisrael is going through is bringing us closer. To the to the climax of Ikvesi de Meshicha, it cannot be for naught. And I was thinking that the um, that uh, uh, some years ago uh, we had suggested that uh, in Hilchus Shabbos, the uh, we're told not to go out into Rishus Rabbim with earmuffs because uh, the Mishnah Brewer brings it. You might take off the earmuffs. To, to listen to, uh, to uh, excuse me, not to go out with gloves. <laughs> I mixed it up. Not to go out with gloves because you might take off the gloves to shake somebody's hand. It does not say, nobody says, don't go out with earmuffs. That you, because there's no shash that you're going to take off the earmuffs to hear what somebody else has to say. Shem Yitain that we should value the ability to shake another's hand. Shem Yitain, that we should listen to what another has to say. The Rabbani Shalom should give us simchas, b'teich simcha, and psuras uh, tevas for klal yisrael, that wherever Jews are, and we should be zeicher to be that uh, the b'chor, b'ni b'chor Yisrael, the Rebbeinu Shalom says, the Rebbeinu Shalom designates Klal Yisrael as b'chor, says Rebbe Simcha, because just like the b'chor, the father, the biological father, owes gratitude to the poor for having changed his status that now he can sit on a Sanhedrin. He's made that breakthrough outside of himself to that which is him and isn't him and therefore he can paskin more objectively through having traveled through this bridge of subjectivity to attain to a higher level of objectivity. Similarly, we should reach the point where the world should recognize that Klal Yisrael is a vanguard, B'nib Chari, and is in fact bringing a message to the world of Achdu Sabere, the oneness of the Beire, and that all of history and everything that is happening, however, limited our perception, conception of it, that Shem Yitain, that it should be Psuras Tevis, Yeshua Surafuas for the world at large. Call Tuv.